So I'm not sure if anyone heard any of the last uh, five minutes of that because I just realised I didn't start the broadcast. So I'm just going to quickly run through some of that again. Um, so I really apologise about that. Oh, these things happen. How embarrassing. So <laughs> to refresh there, if nobody caught any of that, um, <clears throat> I'm Dr. Heather Meekle. Um, I work at First Psychology Scotland. I've been doing several of these, so you think I should know better by now, but I don't. Um, today we're going to talk a bit about a uh, seasonal affective disorder or seasonal depression. Um, I've got some handouts there that should be available to you. You can download those anytime uh, during the webinar, but they'll also be available on our website as well. Please leave any comments or questions in the questions panel and I will try and answer them. Some people are saying no, they didn't hear anything, so that's great. Super thrilled about that. Um, but I just want to get started just to make sure that we still got enough time um, to talk about everything. So what is seasonal depression disorder? So these are just some of the types of experiences that you might have if you have seasonal depression. Uh, and these can range from mild to severe uh, and can potentially have quite a significant impact on carrying out day-to-day -day activities. So nobody really knows for certain what causes seasonal, seasonal depression. Uh, but some people, or some experts more should say, uh, believe that it's caused by fewer hours of sunlight during the winter months that can deplete our body's levels of serotonin, often called the feel-good chemical, which affects our mood. Uh, low light levels are also thought to affect the production of another brain chemical called melatonin, which can disrupt the body's internal clock. Uh, and the body produces more melatonin during hours of darkness, and that can make us feel sleepy at night. But some people who have seasonal depression are thought to produce more melatonin than usual, and that can make them more tired throughout the day. So if you're diagnosed with seasonal depression, um, there are lots of different ways it can be treated. Your GP may recommend treatment with antidepressants called selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which stands for SSRI. They might recommend psychological therapy uh, or light therapy, where a special lamp is used to simulate light exposure. Uh, and they might also recommend some lifestyle changes to help you cope with SAD as well. So they might recommend getting as much daylight as possible. Um, so you can do that, I suppose, during lockdown, making your work or your home environment uh, as light and airy as possible, you know, even sitting in your windows when you're indoors. They might recommend getting outdoors as much as possible, trying to get as much natural sunlight, um, even if that's just a brief lunchtime walk, and um, that can be really beneficial as kind of similar, getting regular exercise. The more you can get that outdoors um, in daylight, the better getting up early and not sleeping in so this can help balance your melatonin levels and your mood and decrease your tiredness throughout the day um, eating a healthy balanced diet that can really help balance um, your mood your energy levels and um, as well managing stress and um, obviously this is quite a stressful time more stressful perhaps than other years um, for you or your family and so we've got a little bit more information on managing stress in our coronavirus toolkit so do check that out Socialising can really improve your mood, it can give you some fun, some entertainment, support, and it can reduce feelings of depression, loneliness, and hopelessness, because it reminds us that we're important and that we're part of something bigger. So more information on staying connected uh, during winter lockdown uh, can be found in last week's webinar. So if you're interested uh, in learning a bit more about that, do check that out on our website or our social media pages. They might also re recommend avoiding things that can make uh, your seasonal depression worse. So things like alcohol or drugs can act as an anti can act as a depressant, I should say. And they might recommend talking to your family or your friends uh, about how you're feeling, um, just so that they can understand better what you're going through and support you more effectively. So out of these lifestyle factors that can help you cope with seasonal depression, which ones are people thinking might be more difficult due to the lockdown? So let me know in the questions pane, leave me a comment. What are you kind of most worried that you're not going to be able to do? Because understandably, one of the biggest problems this year um, is that lockdown might impact more people um, from suffering from seasonal depression than who normally would, or people who regularly experience seasonal depression might feel worse because they're maybe not able to use normal coping strategies that make the season, you know, a bit more enjoyable. Um, someone said, you know, meeting friends, socialising, seeing family, yeah, even just having nights out, planning, going on holidays. And um, some people with seasonal depression try and get might try and get away and get some sun um, during winter holidays, even getting to the gym, 
obviously our gym or some of our gyms are closed depending on where you are um looking forward to christmas going to concerts going to the theater things like that and that can contribute um to that sense of feeling trapped feeling hopeless feeling helpless and that's on top of all the additional stress that a lot of us are experiencing due to the pandemic and lockdown anyway and working from home might kind of amplify those negative aspects because it might reinforce that tendency not to go out and not leave the house so that might minimize opportunities that we have to get exposed to natural sunlight if we're not even you know traveling during the day um we're not meeting up with as many people we're not pursuing as many sort of outdoor activities and things like that so i just want to do a quick poll just to find out uh, how confident everyone's feeling right now um, so a lot of you have mentioned they're really worried about socializing during the winter lockdown so just let me know how confident you're feeling you're feeling very confident somewhere in the middle um, just click on the appropriate response and press submit So if you've not responded yet, just go ahead and do that now and I'll close the poll in a wee minute. So I'm just going to close the poll now and I'll just share the results with everyone. So quite a lot of you are feeling a lot are feeling fairly confident um, and kind of just over or just under a third of you feeling not very confident and some people kind of somewhere in the middle. So hopefully so that does give me a wee bit of a better sense of where you're coming from and hopefully we can see if we can get more of you to feel more confident uh, by the end of this webinar uh, and now i've got a wee bit of an idea of what's kind of most important to people as well so the aim of this webinar is to help you develop some of the skills and coping strategies that will help you cope with seasonal depression this lockdown and we're going to look primarily at having a more positive mindset and what to do when you don't have any motivation um, so hopefully this will give you a chance to get some new ideas to cope with seasonal depression or the winter blues this lockdown but if none of that sounds relevant to you or if there's something in particular that you'd really like me to cover do let me know in the questions panel um, as I've just picked out you know some kind of general examples uh, and I'm happy to adapt these um, to more specific situations I didn't want to repeat myself too much um, based on what we talked about last week on staying connected so there will be a lot more information on kind of making the most of our connections and seeing you know socializing and stuff during lockdown in that webinar so if you're if that's what's really important to you do go and check that out so I'll try not to repeat myself too much with that but if there is anything that you want to know like just let me know so we'll start with changing our mindset so in recent years there's been quite a lot of research going into how people's mindsets um, about winter time especially whether they're positive or negative uh, about winter how that relates to their levels of depression during winter months so there was a study which was done recently uh, and i think they talked about it in a recent guardian uh, article maybe they looked at how residents in one of norway's most northerly cities cope when they're experiencing the long polar nights so that's when they don't see the sun from mid-november to about mid-january and the residents in this town don't seem to show the levels of wintertime depression that you might expect in fact they tend not to report any increase in mental distress uh, during the winter so to try and uncover their secret a health psychologist named Leibowitz which I might be butchering that name um, she investigated whether their mindset was what helped protect them from the stresses of the long polar night and this is based on lots of psychological research which has shown how our perceptions or our mental framing uh, of stressful events can alter the ways that we're affected by them so for example it has been found that those people who see stressful events as challenges providing opportunities to learn and grow and adapt tend to cope much better than those who focus on the threatening aspects so for example if there's a possibility of failure rejection or illness and the research shows that these differences in mindset not only affect people's moods but also even their physical responses so that can be changes in blood pressure or heart rate or how quickly they recover after an event and this has particularly been found in research on individuals who have immigrated to a new country um, and they found that how well people adjusted was predicted by whether their mindset was focused more on the opportunities of the transition or on the negatives so our appraisal of whether an event feels like an opportunity or a threat so 
but for everyone that's watching, this will depend on our circumstances, the resources that we have available to deal with the problems that we encounter. But that doesn't mean that our mindsets can't be changed and can't help how we cope with things. So there was one experiment, um, somebody, a professor at Harvard Business School did, and they asked participants to face their fear of public speaking. And they found that simply asking participants to repeat the phrase, I'm excited, really helped to reduce their anxious feelings and led to better overall performance because it encouraged them to view the situation as a new challenge rather than a threat. And many psychological therapies like cognitive behavioural therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy have uh, been found to increase our resilience by helping us to reframe stressful events in more constructive ways. Uh, more information on these types of therapies can be found in the booklets that are in the handouts as well. So to investigate whether a difference in outlook could also explain differences in levels of depression during winter time, Leibowitz designed the Wintertime Mindset Scale. And this asked participants to rate how much they agreed or disagreed with statements such as winter is boring, winter is a limiting time of year, there are many things to dislike about winter versus there are many things to enjoy about winter, I love the coziness of the winter months, and winter brings many wonderful seasonal changes. So you might ask yourself which side of that line you are most, uh, you would most think like. Because at Leibowitz found that participants' answers predicted their well-being over the coming months. So the more they saw winter as an exciting opportunity to enjoy, you know, the climate, the different activities that they can enjoy, the better their mood was, and they had higher levels of life satisfaction and overall mental health. Now, most people don't realise that their beliefs about winter are subjective. Uh, quite often they feel like you know there's nothing they can do about it like winter sucks that's it um, but the reality is of course there there is plenty that you can do about it and we're going to look at a couple of examples so like that kind of Norwegian town looking for the opportunities so obviously our opportunities to engage in kind of winter sports things like that are much more limited here but maybe you can learn something from the experience about yourself about other people you know your family and friends even about a topic that you're interested in so you know you might spend more time with your family get to know them even better you might slow down and take stock of your own life where are you now where do you want to be what are you doing to get yourself there how is your work-life balance how are you dealing with stress or maybe there's you've always secretly harboured a passion for something, but you've never had time to pursue it. And also, maybe you can grow as a person as a result of this experience. Maybe you take a course or start online therapy or start a reflection journal or do something creative, explore your emotions, work on your relationships, read a self-help book. Uh, if you've got any recommendations of things that you like to do um, to help you grow and make the most of these kinds of opportunities, let me know in the questions panel. I know for myself, uh, doing the doctorate, it was a very stressful experience for me. Um, and I learned a lot about psychology, of course, uh, but I also had to engage in lots of supervision and lots of therapy as well as part of this training. Uh, and I learned a lot about myself. Uh, and I definitely grew in the ways that I dealt with certain insecurities or certain stressors uh, and kind of changed my mindset about, you know, how I felt about trying new things you know previously I think I was very very focused on you know that possibility of failure or rejection and um, but being able to see a bit more as like a challenge and an opportunity not all the time um, but more of the time has definitely benefited me in my work my relationships and uh, my mental health and as well try not to let the weather stop us you know during the first lockdown I feel like a lot of us really appreciated how much we could benefit from getting outside getting some exercise so try not to let the weather stop you from doing the things that you enjoy try and keep up outdoor socializing lockdown restrictions permitting as the Norwegians say there's no such thing as bad weather only bad clothes I've definitely gotten caught out on that a few times before though and now can be a good time to start something like a gratitude journal so there are incredible benefits associated with journaling Although I admit I wasn't too sure about it myself, um, so I started doing it a couple of weeks ago um, because I wanted to have a bit of an experience of it before I asked somebody else to do it. Um, so honestly, even though it seems like such a small thing to do, it really improved my mood and peace of mind, especially before bed. Um, so I would do in the evening, I had to set a wee alarm on my phone to remind me kind of before I went to sleep. Uh, and I don't know about you, but I often go to bed thinking about all the things I need to get done tomorrow, or if it's been a really difficult day, going over all the things um, that happened that day. Uh, but keeping a gratitude or any other kind of positive journal, it uh, really helped me lower my stress levels, helped me feel more calm at night. 
and by noting what I'm grateful for, it helped me gain more clarity on what I wanted more of in my life and what I wanted less of. Um, so it encouraged me to spend a bit more time um, reading, drawing, exercising, rather than just you know working late into the night or watching TV. But starting a gratitude journal or any kind of positive journal uh, can help you focus on what really matters to you, can help you learn more about yourself, because it's a safe zone, you know, it's your eyes only, you can write anything that you feel without judgment, and this can help you become more open and honest with yourself. And on days when you're not feeling so great, you can read back through your gratitude journal and remember that you have great people and things in your life, and that can help adjust your mindset to cope with any new challenges that come up. Um, so maintaining a kind of gratitude journal or any kind of journal is really up to you, whatever works best for you. There are lots of different gratitude journals out there that you can buy that have prompts in them or just gratitude tasks or prompts on, out on the internet. So definitely have a research if that's something that you think you'd be interested in. And I know a change in mindset is not a cure-all for everything. You know, it can't get rid of our anxieties about job insecurity or fears of losing a loved one. We shouldn't attempt to get rid of those emotions. But adopting just a more positive wintertime mindset could maybe make this second lockdown a bit less daunting, especially if you're worried about keeping your mood up when there's bad weather. You know, we can't deny the difficulties we'll face, but by recognising our own capacity to control our response to just the lockdown and the changing seasons, we might find enough positivity and resilience to kind of see us through those days. So this time we do at least have the advantage of knowing what did and didn't work during the first lockdown so we can be a bit more realistic in our expectations of what we can and cannot achieve. So you know focusing our efforts on the small actions that bring the most comfort rather than aiming to you know, write a best-selling novel or learn a whole new language. But what if you really still struggle to get motivated to do these things that will improve your mental health? So we're going to look a bit at getting motivated. Oops. That little pug picture is just too cute. Um, someone's just mentioned uh, they're training to become a counsellor and change their mindset and um, doing that and feel much more positive and more positive in helping others. So yeah, I mean, I can obviously recommend taking therapy course because that's what I do. Um, but what if you just struggle to engage in any of those activities that would help you feel better, whether it's, you know, training, going on a course or seeing friends and family? So most of us take action because we believe it'll benefit us or bring about future happiness and that motivates us but if we're feeling low or depressed this can change our brain in a way that makes us you know makes it difficult to experience a sense of pleasure or enjoyment and things that we would normally enjoy doing. So if you feel sad or numb or exhausted you might not feel like there's a reason to do anything so even though you might know all the things that should make you feel better you know exercising, sticking to a routine, speaking to friends and family, if nothing has satisfied you lately, you might think, what is the point? And can I not do any of those things that would normally make you happy and keep you well? So are some techniques and strategies you can use to kind of gradually regain the motivation and activity that you need to support your mental health and happiness? So we're just going to look at some examples of that. So say you feel like you don't want to do anything. So one of the things that you could try is just making the goal to do it, not to enjoy it. So that kind of comes with keeping a routine. So when you're feeling depressed, you know, it's natural to lose interest in things that make you happy. You know, comedy is no longer funny, sports are no longer fun. Um, so when doing something fun or active, try and just do it with the goal to enjoy it. No, try and do it with the goal just to do it, not enjoy it. Um, so sticking to a routine, it can actually give you a sense of normalcy, gives you a sense of control um, of, about what's going around you because you can't control your emotions, but at least you'll have control over part of your life. Um, so it can help you prevent you from feeling worse and it can minimise the sort of overwhelming helplessness that you might feel. Or if you're sick of having the same routine for all of lockdown, you might start by asking yourself, you know, what things have I enjoyed in the past or what things would I like to start doing? Um, you know, there's no right or wrong place to start. The first step of identifying, you know, enjoyable behaviours or meaningful activities can help you get moving and do something different rather than what you have been doing. And if you feel overwhelmed by the amount or size of tasks that you have, it's really important to set realistic goals and expectations. So you can't expect yourself to complete all the tasks that you've laid out or that you would normally do when you're feeling good. Your energy levels then and now are going to be drastically different, so it's just not feasible. So think about what you can do in that moment and scale it back. You know, you don't want to push yourself and overdo it. If your goal's too large uh, and you're unable to do it, you'll get really disappointed in yourself. 
uh, and having more negative thoughts will stop you from wanting to try again. So rather than setting yourself up for failure, try and focus on those small achievable goals. You know, if you're trying to tidy your room, you might just want to say, I'm just going to pick up two things today. Um, or maybe I'll just pick up everything that's blue, everything that's green, everything that's red. And if you feel like you don't want to do anything because, you know, there's no point, try and become more aware of that negative self-talk. So when you're feeling low or depressed, we can become harsh and critical and that voice might tell us there's no point in doing anything. But this self-talk is normally not accurate, it's not supported by facts, but we believe it. Uh, and this stops us from doing the things that are important to our, to our mental health and our happiness. Um, so try and become aware of those thoughts and how you talk to yourself and then try and gradually change and reframe those thoughts. So, you know, if something's not worth doing unless it's done perfectly, try and say, you know, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing badly. It's better to do something than nothing at all. Or if you're saying, you know, I'm useless, I can't do anything, just say, you know, I'm not useless. I'm struggling right now and that happens to everybody. So even if you can't find any motivation, don't berate yourself for it. You know, even making the bed brushing your teeth, anything, um, try and reward yourself for that. Because if you're hard on yourself, getting motivated to do anything just becomes, you know, another chore. So we've got oh, some people have given us some suggestions. Um, take inspiration from my chickens. They always want to get out in the morning. Love that. Um, oh, walking the dog. Yeah, I get a lot of people say, um, you know, have it looking after a pet. It's really motivating because they can't, you know, they can't feed themselves, they can't walk themselves. So getting up for them really gets them started for the day. That's kind of true if you feel like you struggle to do very difficult tasks. Trying to pair it with something that you enjoy. Um, so, you know, emotions play a major role in our motivation level, which is why it's so hard to maintain motivation because our, emo our emotions are changing all the time. Um, so if you're sad or bored or lonely or anxious, your desire to tackle something that's really difficult or very boring um, <clears throat> will suffer. So try pairing it with something you enjoy, you know, like listening to music when you run or calling a friend, see if you're cleaning the house or having dinner by yourself. That's something that you hate doing. Um, try and, you know, Zoom or phone a friend and chat to them while you're doing it. Um, turn on your favourite show or just reward yourself, you know, if you've applied yourself to a task for, say, an agreed amount of time, 15 or 30 minutes, or reward yourself by doing something that you do enjoy for 15 minutes or just a treat, you know, if you're food motivated like I am. Uh, just make sure that the fun doesn't impair your performance, uh, you know, make you too distracted, especially if you're doing it whilst you're working or something. Um, so what's some other suggestions? Um, Yep, putting on some music that motivates me. Um, someone's got this, oh, I like this one. Um, they find it really difficult to do the dishes. Um, so their trick is to wash a dish or two anytime they've got something going in the microwave or got the kettle on. So they're already in the kitchen, just waiting for something to be done. So they pick up a sponge and start washing the dishes. Um, and by starting, you get motivated enough to wash the rest of the dishes. Oh, I like that. Um, oh, someone said podcasts are good for cleaning. Yep, if you love a podcast. Because, um, yeah, often, you know, I like the dishes one, because often once you start something, you end up finishing it. It's just that the difficulty in getting started that's the problem. So right at the start, we've kind of identified some of the lifestyle factors that can help us cope with seasonal depression. And we've looked at how we might overcome the barriers to carrying out these. So if we've got a negative mindset or a lack of motivation, that can make it really difficult to do those things that can help. Um, if you feel like you're really struggling with seasonal depression or winter blues this season, do feel free to try and talk to your GP about it. They re might recommend other treatments like medication or light therapy or psychological therapy. But I just want to check in and see how everyone is feeling now. So I just want to ask you the same question I asked at the start, um, just to see if anyone's response has changed. So just select the response um, that fits you and press submit. Uh, and I'll close the poll in a wee moment. I'm like desperately trying to keep this in time, seeing as I wasted the first four minutes talking to myself. So I'll try not to wait too long. So if anyone's got any other questions, um, you can let me know. We'll have a wee bit of time to answer a couple of those. So I'm just going to close the poll just now. Um, and I'll... What just happened? <laughs> My apologies. So I'm just going to share the results with you. So it looks like some of you are feeling a little bit more confident or somewhat confident. So that's great. Um, 
If you've got any questions, just let me know. I'm going to leave these resources up for a couple of minutes. So if you want to learn any more from our podcast, um, you can just look those up on SoundCloud, search for First Psychology, uh, or have a look at the handouts on our website. Everything's up there. Or just send me an email, because we've not got very much time to answer questions. Um, so, but I would love to hear from you still, because that's totally my fault. So do drop me a wee email if there's any questions that you do have that we've not kind of gotten around to. Um, how do you start the task when you can't get yourself motivated to do it? Um, so I guess one of the things that I find most helpful is at least making the task seem a little bit smaller. So like if you're going for if you want to go for a run, just putting your shoes on. Like don't don't even go for the run, just put your shoes on. Um, that's you know that can help. Um, or what would be another kind of good example of that? Um, Hmm. If there's any tasks in particular, let me know. Um, but that's certainly that's that's one of the things I find most difficult to so get oh yeah, getting the Hoover out, someone suggests. I like that. Um so you don't have to do the task, just make the first step towards it. Like that person who was doing the dishes and um, while the microwave is on. So like you don't have to do all the dishes, just do one. Um or don't pick up, you know, pick up everything that's on the floor, just pick up one thing. Um or put something on that motivates you, or if you find it easier to get started with things and um, when you have company you know you could put a vlog on on youtube and um, sometimes that helps me if i'm like oh, i don't want to do the ironing but i'm watching a vlog of somebody else that's like you know going about their day and you know maybe they're doing the ironing or doing the cooking that helps kind of motivate me um or just putting music on that really motivates you and um, but just phoning or having a video chat with someone um even if it's just to brush your teeth can be really helpful Someone's asked, how do you know if someone close to you suffers from seasonal depression but but doesn't know it? Um, so maybe they're not kind of they're not very they're not aware that they're maybe withdrawing. Is that maybe kind of what you mean? Um, so you maybe notice that someone's not kind of engaging in things they would normally do or speaking to you as often. Um, I guess the best thing you can do is to just check in, ask them how they're doing. I know it's difficult. You can't kind of help people if they don't want help. Um, but I do think just being there and being ready for them um, whenever they are ready to ask for help can be really important and just checking in regularly to make sure that they're doing okay can be helpful. Someone said, oh, we do have a procrastination booklet. Um, actually, um, so what we'll do is I'll make that available on the First Ecology website. It might not be there straight away, um, but I'll try and get that up as soon as I can. So that might also help if you're struggling um, to get started on tasks and you maybe find that you're procrastinating. We'll try and make that available as well. Um, that's a really good point um, if someone struggles with procrastinating. Um, perfect. So I'm just aware of the time and I know we kind of have to finish up. I apologise about that for starting off um, a bit on the wrong foot there. Um, but do email me if you've got any other questions and I'll do my best to answer those. Um, but thank you so much for attending today. Um, you will get a wee survey at the end if you could fill that in um, and give us some feedback. That would be great. Um, we also get a follow up email um, with a recording of the webinar, maybe in 24 or 48 hours. So you can watch it again if you want. Um, and you can access all the handouts and all those resources will be up on the website as well. Um, so do have a look at that um, and check out some of our other webinars. So we talked about working from home and staying connected. And next week we're talking about how to have a merry lockdown Christmas. So we'd love it if you join us for that as well. So on behalf of First Psychology Scotland and myself, thank you so much for joining me today. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. <laughs>